airchecks.com. Part of the Heritage Media Group. Going to the edge back in those days, 20 years ago, but back in those days was, or 40 years ago, when you might have said Overy instead of whatever the hotel's name was, okay? Avery. That was Avery. Okay, now that was going close to the edge then, and that was the Howard Stern of that, whether you knew it or not. In a way. Oh, and you didn't do it regularly. You didn't do it regularly. Oh, no, no, no. But it had you had jokes like that, or slips like that, and you found out it caught on. That's exactly, that's the level it was. Now, now we talk about human parts all over the place, okay? I mean, that, <laughs> that didn't exist even 10 years ago. But uh, it's not, but it's not, it's not humorous. It's not witty. It's just plain, blatantly nothing. It, it's just, it's just no need for it. No, I mean, if, no if you want to, if you want to be smutty, now there's an old-fashioned yeah. word. Okay. If you can do it in a clever kind of way, maybe, maybe that might mm -hmm. be worthwhile. But I don't, I don't see anything witty or clever about the way he, he delivers... I don't even, even want to say his name okay, anymore. Don't, let's, let's not say okay, anymore. let's not okay. even mention him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, there are other morning shows, and they call them zoos or clubs. or What, what are other words for these morning shows, uh, Peter? I've uh, lost all track of them. <laughs> well, there's a lot of them out there. Like in half the cities in the country, there's the morning zoo or the morning team or the wake-up team or something or like that. Or just blank in the morning. Or just something in the morning, somebody in the morning. Now, the, they've so, let the morning people, just the morning people have some freedom in radio. The rest of the day, all your favorites. Whitney Houston, Michael Bolton, four in a row, right here. Mariah Carey. It's incredible, even with some of these morning teams, the lack of freedom that they have. Take, for example, uh, and this is something that you know, is you know, one of the things that we do here on this show is we talk about what's going on on a larger level in the industry. Uh, for example, over over Kiss 108, uh, Maddie Siegel, who does the morning show there, that show is now syndicated. It's on the air in Providence and Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, by the same companies that own, <laughs> own the station he's on, so it's right. not exactly But the incredible, far out. The, the, the incredible thing is that each station has the ability to insert its own music. And obviously to do that, mm -hmm. yeah, and obviously to do that, the pieces where Maddie and company actually get to open the mic and talk have got to be pretty carefully timed. And so even there, I think, you know, any, any ability to really be improvisational or, or to do anything especially new and different, even there, is, doesn't exist. You know, one of the differences yeah. in radio these days is that, uh, well, there's probably twice as many stations as there were back in 1955, of course, but there are half as many jobs available for people because of a lot of these syndicator shows uh, and because of satellite music programming. And plus, uh, plus the fact that with the new FCC rules where one company can own like three, four stations, four stations, four stations they, right. in one, mm -hmm. one community. That's right. Uh, WBZ, I know, is, 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 uh, is out to get the new FM stations, yeah. all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. They're building studios to cover that. Yeah. If you tick off one company, man, you, you've, you've lost half the city. <laughs> you know, at once we could go to their competition, but now their competition is them. Well, <laughs> you, let's, let's look at, you know, look I, I, I think I, I really look at you, Scott, and you, Peter, uh, with, without great envy. I, I admire your, your youth and everything, like your virility and stuff, <laughs> which I think I've lost a bit of a whole lot of through the years. But I'm, I, I think it'd be so tough to break into radio right now and to, and to try to make a career. Oh, of it. It, very tough, very tough. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, every station needed a DJ or an announcer or a news person around the clock at one time, and now they don't. And from an owner's point of view, me owning WJIB, I have the station automated quite a bit at night too. I mean, I do the same thing. Uh, but there's reasons for it. Sometimes in this day and age, a lot of uh, employees do not have respect for authority or owners or managers of radio stations or any other business. Well, you have, you have so much there's, there's a big screw you attitude going on out there that well, will be even said to employers. Okay. Well, that's too bad because I think any, especially anybody on the air... Um, and I've never sucked up to management, so right. don't mm -hmm. take that as a point and that I'm I was, weakening. But I was but going I, to ask you a question about that later. Okay, but okay. but 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 I think That's when you when you're on the air, I think it doesn't matter whether you like the management or you don't like the management. You're in business for yourself, right. and people judge you by what you are. Mm -hmm. I've never gone on the air and said uh, 
I don't really care. They don't pay me enough. Therefore, I'm not going to do a job. That's, that's ridiculous. You're only killing yourself. And I think you owe it to anybody who employs you to do the very best you can. Do I sound like some kind of a, something out of the 19th century? No. But I mean, well, I believe that very strongly. That's not always the case these days. We well, have I, I a think very that's, individual attitude. We're all out for ourselves. And that's, well, I think that's... Yeah. A, I, I, I don't like that attitude yeah. at all. I think it's wrong. I was going to ask you the question. I have heard uh, through amongst, you know, various things here and there in my radio career and in the Boston area uh, that you are a very nice guy. What are you doing in radio? <laughs> how did you get a job at a 50,000-watt station? I don't know. I don't know how to respond to no, that. No, I, mean, I, really, I don't know how to respond I, to that. I have heard that you are a nice guy. Of course, I, a I nice think, guy. I think you could do, I think you do better. I work with producers who I really like and who work. Yeah. I, I think they... I think they, you're probably a nice manager, you're a nice owner of a station. I think, in a way, it's kind of, you can be kind of selfish about that because people are willing to work for somebody who is nice to them, much much more so I mean, if, than somebody's going to scream and yell at them. Although screaming and yelling, I know, probably does not come natural to either one of us. No. Or does it to you? No, Bob? never, never. No. Uh, people will, will, act, will, work, will work their hearts out, extra hours, everything, mm -hmm. if they think you appreciate them. Yeah. But I, I do appreciate people. I, yeah. I, I do work, I've worked with a lot of good people. I How about you? With a lot I, have, of I, haven't raised, people. I haven't raised my voice in eight years. How about you? Do you always talk that way, the way you're talking yeah. now? Yeah. It's a nice, Isn't gentle that true? tone. Yeah. yeah. You sound like you've been on the air a lot yourself, too, because you get a nice voice. I've been on, yeah, 25 years straight yeah, on the air. Mm -hmm. You Just disc like jockey you. and stuff? Uh, disc jockey, uh, everything sales. You wouldn't believe it. There's no commercials on this station. <laughs> <laughs> How can the owner laugh when he says that? <laughs> because this radio station, I just found a new slogan for the station today. I just thought of it on the way in. Uh, and I can't quite remember it now. Uh, I think it was something like, uh, oh, something about uh, the art of music and the art of radio takes uh, is top priority or something like that. But WGIB, where the art of music and the art of radio is more important than anything else, or something like that. I can't remember what it was. I wrote it down and I forgot it. Whatever. I prefer cranking out yeah. 250,000 milliwatts okay, of power. Let's, <laughs> let's all say it like the FMs do. Okay? Cranking, cranking out 250,000 250, milliwatts of, of power. <laughs> I know it. it makes. I know yeah. who you're poking fun at. Because <laughs> I have no work there. And it makes the station sometimes sound like uh, I very often said... Uh, and now, heavy metal news. Yeah. So it sounds like that kind of a, an announcement. Well, actually, I wasn't thinking of that when I when yeah. said that. But <laughs> yeah, a lot no, of stations will point out that they're 50. I was thinking of FMs mostly, your 50,000 watt power of tower and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, because, oh, really, because we do that too, yeah. 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 Cranking yeah. out 50,000 watts of, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Any, anyway, I. Uh, no, so I heard you're a nice guy. Well, I, just and, wanted, oh, I just want to point and, out, you know, in addition yeah. to that, working uh, at BZ, also as I do, I get a chance to get to know many of the people who serve as Norm's producers, and I can tell you that of all the producing shifts at the station, that one, even though it involves working overnight on the weekends, is far and away the most coveted, yeah. in part because whoever produces Norm's show actually gets to go on air about three in the morning or so and do the dumb birthday game. Oh, yeah, even earlier when I first come on, sure. If you, have, you know, if you, if you can talk with me on the air, yeah. why not? I, I, I think that's what radio is, it makes it fun. And, and just for the thrill of working with Norman, I've got to say also, I was talking the other night with uh, one of the fellows who's a substitute talk show host over at the station. He was telling me, I kid you not, I was telling him that we were going to do our show uh, over here, and he was saying to me that the biggest thrill that he has ever had in radio was the night that he got to turn on the mic and say, I'm Steve Lavelli filling in for Norm Nathan tonight. <laughs> Isn't that nice? That's very, very nice. It's, it's one of the nice things. Norm. The, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, one of the nice things, the fact that uh, I've worked with, I've worked with a lot of people in the business who were just children when I weren't even born when I began. Like Steve Lavelli, when I first met him, he was at WERS, the Emerson College Station, doing, and I was a guest on his show. Malcolm Alter, who does our traffic, I've known him since before he got to be a traffic reporter. When he was saying, "I'd like to get into radio," you know, I mean, I've known a lot of these these guys since since they were children. And I feel very proud, like a, like a surrogate father. I've seen them grow up, and I've seen them do well for themselves. And I'm really pleased about that. Am I getting too soupy and sickening? No. 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 Okay, hey, thank you very much. I radio, appreciate that. Radio is an art, and music is an art, and things like that. <laughs> and uh, it's, we're all human beings here. Will you stop? With I know. That? I that just get soupy, too. No, anyway, uh, Norm, what are some of the things... So we, we established you're a nice guy. Okay. Uh, what, are, <laughs> what are some things you got fired for? 
Oh, incompetence mostly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, back in the early days. When I was with, when how, did, I, how did you get fired from WESX? Well, I'll tell you how I got fired from WCOP, okay, which was, was the first, first one. Right. That was weekends. We should do this in order, right? <laughs> okay, that's right. You know, I'm a very organized person. <laughs> anyway, I got fired because at, in those days, you know, you would spin records. And the commercials will be on records, two transcriptions. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how, how, how acquainted people are with I've these approaches. With yeah, you just yeah. Now we've got cartridges, cassettes, all kinds of things. You press buttons and they're there. We have touch screens. It's easy. But then you had to say you're playing Pepsi Cola hits the spot, twelve full ounces. That you know some of those early things. They'd only last about thirty seconds. You'd have two turntables. Some stations would have three. So you'd have one record, then you'd have to cue up the next record. Cueing means you'd put the record up to where the music came in. You'd put that on a special switch so it wouldn't go over the air. Back it to a quarter of a, a turn, and then you'd hold it, let it go, turn up a... Po oh, I mean, it was complicated. It's I won't go through those. Okay, but it was, it was kind of complicated. I, w I mean, I never. I was so nervous. I never could get the hang of that. And I was, I was putting the wrong tags on. We'd have a commercial for a tea company, and I'd put a lipstick tag on it. <laughs> so I, w I mean, I couldn't imagine anybody mastering this mystery. So they got a guy who was, uh, who could do the job, and that was the end of my career well, there. I, I know what they did. They invented cart machines just for him, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh I, mean, I mean, now and now it's so well, easy that, that even a glom yeah, like me, at the, at the. At ESX, I got taken off the air because I couldn't pronounce R's and L's. Uh, and then I so I got the bright news. But I was still a kid. I was 18. I had been fired from... I had worked at three radio stations before I was even 19. I thought that's pretty good. <laughs> fired from fired from two. And in Boston, too. Well, yeah. Right well, yeah. COP and then, then uh, WESX was Salem, not exactly a major market. But I got to WMX, which was. But that was that cockamamie station, which at that time was probably the worst station that ever existed on the face of the earth. A lot of people have said that. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> I mean, it, it was kind of, it's kind of a joke. I do talks now on old-time radio and stuff. I play excerpts of, you know, the network stuff. Uh, so the jokes I talk about local radio, it's almost always, or when I reminisce, it's almost always MEX. And I haven't even worked there in over 50 years, yet no place I've ever worked at since then produced the kind of really crazy stories that, that happened at that point. You know, I mean... Uh, Tony David at the organ was our big band at the uh, Silver Dollar Bar and Grill. And I mean, I, you have to remember, I was I was not even of drinking age when I had to go in these places. And I would look up and down the street. Silver Dollar Bar and Grill is is where the combat zone used to be, although that sort of uh, has pretty much died. And, and but it wasn't a great place even back then, be, while the, while the combat zone was actually Scully Square. But I remember looking up and down the street before I went in thinking, I wonder if anybody I know sees me going into this place, you know. <laughs> and then I would sneak in, you know. And, uh, anyway, they've been, they've been interesting experiences. I've, I've got to, I'm very, very lucky. I've done pretty much what I want to do most of the time. I've had a few jobs I hated in radio, but most of the time I've, I've been very lucky. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. So let's, uh, when, when we sort of got into all these tangents here, we were uh, about at the point where you made the move over from HDH to EEI. How did that come about? Did, did they come to you? Did you go to them? No, I called, uh, I called, Mike Ludlam had been brought in from uh, New York to set up the all-news format. They were News Radio 59, they called, called themselves at that time. And I wanted to get out of HDH because I knew he was cutting down the humor and I, I didn't want to just be a disc jockey, so I called, I called Mike. And he had to think about it a lot because I had no reputation in news. Although one time my wife and I owned a newspaper and I had done news at other stations and all that. Uh, so he took a chance and he, he had made me the co-anchor on the morning show with a guy named Ben Farnsworth who was with WNBC TV in New York now. Ben was a, a good kid. Uh, anyway, that's what happened. He, he took a chance and we did well. We did very, very well. And then uh, John Linker uh, came in. John, yeah, John Linker was uh, came. Ben Ben went off to New York, and then Ben, ben uh, uh, Linker, John Linker came in, and also a new manager came in, and he fired Mike Ludlam, who was probably one of the most knowledgeable radio people I know. And so from that point on, my 
my career in radio, at least at WEI, went downhill. But up to that point, I could I covered the primary uh, convention status at the candidates' headquarters in a in a tongue in cheek kind of humorous way, you know, and that was kind of fun. I had a little dimension. But the next group came in, what were more serious about it. So eventually, I left there and went to WRKO, and I, I really the rest is not even history. I can't even remember where it went from that point on. <laughs> CWMRE. <laughs> oh, that was the job I hated the most of all. It was a memory station. It was at the same station that was WMX. WMX, that's yeah. right. It was at 1510 on the dial. Yeah, I hated that the most of all because I was playing records that I didn't even like the first time around. <laughs> and here they were memory tunes, and I thought, if i got to play Don Cornell singing... It isn't fair for you to want me. If I gotta do that one more time, I'm gonna throw up all over the manager's shoes. <laughs> the manager, incidentally, was 22 years old. He he didn't, he didn't even know about current music, let alone music of the 30s and 40s, which was way before his time. I mean, that was crazy station. Do you want to hear one one story about the M E M R E? Yeah. Sure. Okay. You know, like in in New York, they had W N B C, which doesn't exist anymore. Right. It's now W F A N, and they had W A B C. So one of them, I forget which one, in order to emphasize that it was not the other, would say W A B C, and they pause after the A to show it wasn't. W now somebody at W M R E got this is W M R E, and I kept saying, why are we doing that? Is there is there a W N R E or is there a W J R E? Why are we doing that? W A R E anywhere? A W A R E, maybe that was it. Anyway, it was that kind of a station. I, uh, that was not run too terribly well either, but it was a couple of steps above the old WMEX. I noticed just before that you had been at RKO. How, I see 1980 here, and I know it wasn't long after that that they went into talk radio. How, how long were you there? I was there during the transition. That was a, an unsuccessful <laughs> two years. <laughs> that was awful. They kept changing the format. I think they thought I really sucked. So let's change the format. Maybe we can do better the next time around. I was there two years. We must have had six different formats. One I liked, it was with uh, a guy who was very clever. It was a two-man show. And we used to do takeoffs and all kinds of things. And I thought it was starting to gel, but obviously they did not. So at the end of the two years, that was they didn't renew my contract. And that's when I went to MRE and, and, and that kind of stuff. One of the problems, especially with, let's say, MRE, is that many stations don't realize, or many management so stations do not realize, that if you start a new format, a new set of call letters, or whatever you're doing to change, you've got to give it four years. You can't just give it, you know, two or three rating periods. They do this stuff, and they just kill it afterwards. It's has, incredible. Has any, has any set of call letters on that station been given more than one year in the last decade and a half? <laughs> Which one, 1510? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, of course it's been more than one year. WITS. I mean, they've, they've had, what, six sets of call letters in the past, yeah, what, right. 50 years, right? Yeah. And we've had six sets of call letters, you know, so 40 and only, <laughs> only 45 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, most stations are like that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, uh, BZ is one of the few that's maintained the same call letters for years. Uh, yeah. But MRE stood for memory. That's right. And uh, that's I wanted to talk to the general manager, the 22-year-old kid, right. yeah. and say, we don't have to subscribe to this service, which you have to pay extra for. Let me program the music. And I would I would have liked to have made it. It could still have been memory music, mm -hmm. but a little hipper, you know, more Count Basie, more... Uh, more bad. Uh, Sinatra, yeah. more of the good stuff, yeah. rather than the guy Lombardo's. and Like, like N.E.W. was doing that in New York? Right? Yeah, N.E.W. was doing that at that time. Like They've changed format, too. Mm -hmm. You can't count on anything, Bob. It's really terrible. Oh, hey. This untroubled, what? unsettled world. <laughs> what do you think I bought my own station? Pardon me? Why do you think I oh, bought my own station? I don't blame you. I, I envy you. That's so, a good position so to be in. Anyway, no, even with the MRE thing, that would have been a good move because it would have been a little bit closer to, it might have been a little bit more perkier than, let's say, WXKSAM. Yeah, which is the okay. music of your life. I right. wanted to yeah. separate it from them. Yeah. But when you're dealing with but a you guy do who... that with more bands because they're, they're more thinking of, uh, they're more interested in attracting the women, I think, because the music is... Um, Pretty much on the stricter or the 1980s music of your life was very women-oriented, soft and yeah, slushy. Yeah, ballads. And, yeah, yes. women always like ballads, but, but, that kind of and stuff. And they called it big band. It's funny they call that format big band sometimes, but there's almost no big band in it. Now PLM yeah. in Plymouth is closer to 
what I was, had in mind was. was. Oh, that's right. That's gone. that's yeah, gone now too. One. Yes. They're going away from the radio for three seconds, and it's fun. They're playing all your favorites now, too. All your favorites. Variety. Variety. What now? Like what? What what do you mean? Well, they call it... Well, I mean, I'm being sarcastic. I mean, they they say... Whitney Houston. uh, Houston. Oh, the current, more more Uh, current stuff. It's kind of the same as uh, Wish or Magic or something. Really? Because I I know a lot of people who still like to listen to that kind of stuff. Yeah, PLM did pretty well. In fact, it did very well in the ratings in the Providence market. It beat out like 10 Providence stations. Yeah. Do you realize what we're doing here what? on WJIB? What? We're talking call letters, and we're talking formats, and we're criticizing. You don't hear well, this kind of program too. on radio at all, any, yeah. at all, that's, ever. That's because most stations are afraid to admit that other stations exist. No, you're okay, Bob. We don't care. I, I really admire you for, for what you're doing. This we're, is we're, incredible. We're all, uh, we're all broadcasters. We're all doing our own thing, and that's... Now, how you should look at it. No, I agree with you. I think I think programs like yeah. this have got to be fascinating, maybe for only three people who follow radio that closely. But you're being very daring, and you're doing stuff that, uh, just with this program, that nobody does. Nobody yeah. ever does this. Well, well, we do. Oh, whoops, it's time to go. Uh, we've run out of time. Norton Nathan will be back again with us next week right here on Let's Talk About Radio. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> You've been listening to Let's Talk About Radio, presented each week here on 740 WJIB. Let's Talk About Radio is hosted by several area enthusiasts and is devoted to keeping you informed in an informal way of the happenings and events surrounding broadcast media here in the Boston area and beyond. This program has been pre-recorded for presentation at this time. The views and opinions do not necessarily reflect that of the station. Your comments are very welcome. If you have any comments you'd like to make, or if you have any questions you'd like to have our hosts answer in the near future, please address your correspondence to WJIB Radio, P.O. Box 848, Needham Heights, Mass., 02194. Tune in again next week for Let's Talk About Radio. And coming up next is the 1 o'clock news right here on 740. 740. WJIB, Cambridge, Boston. I'm Peter Garrett of Midnight Oil with a few questions. What have we got billions of barrels of and nowhere to put it? What is so poisonous that a speck will kill you? What won't go away for 200,000 years? Half a million tons may not sound like much, but it's getting difficult to hide. And believe me, industry is having a hard time hiding its nuclear waste. You see, that's the bit they don't tell you about. Tons and tons of long-life poison. So when they sell you the plant, read the small print. Nuclear waste? We can live without it. Contact Greenpeace. Get your hands behind your back. On the floor, all you. On the floor. How many police should we hire? How many farms should we save? How many schools should we fund? How many prisons should we build? What's it going to be? Vote. A message brought to you by the Ad Council. Join us for WJIB's monthly request program where you can phone in to hear the music you want to hear. Our next request show is happening on Monday, May 1st. That's right, Monday, May 1st. Join us for our request show. It's going to be a great time. This is Boston's beautiful music station, 740 WJIB, programmed locally with pride. USA Radio Network News, this is Doug Douglas. This is AirChecks.com.